Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. Short show today. We'll go over the game from last night um, for football and baseball. We'll go over the results and look ahead to today. NFL Power Rankings, news and notes, and my best bet of the day. We'll start with Monday Night Football. Um, predictable outcome, I'd say, with uh, the Green Bay Packers coming out on top and bouncing back from that bad, bad loss against the Saints. 35-17 over the Lions to get themselves to 1-1. One and one. And the Lions drop to 0-2. Oh Aaron Rodgers, 22 of 27, 255 yards, four touchdowns. And Jared Goff, 26 of 36, 246 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Aaron Jones had four touchdowns in this game, one in each quarter. Just incredible. Robert Tonian caught a touchdown pass as well. So did, on the other side, Quintez Cephas and... TJ Hawkinson, who looks like this year's breakout tight end. So, best bet was a winner. I had the over 48 and a half. Easy, easy dub for me. And Fab Five closes out with the 4 1 record with the lone loss coming with the Steelers laying the points. And then the rest of the wins were last night, the Sunday night, and the over the Chiefs Ravens game. 54 and a half, under 47 and a half in Bills Dolphins, and over 47 and a half in Texans Browns. So a four and one week for Fab Five, six and four on the season after going two and three in week one. All right, now we'll move on to Major League Baseball as we will go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to today's games. Royals over to Indians 7 to 2, doubleheader game 1. Casey 68 and 82, Cleveland 73 and 75. Brady Singer to win. He's 5 and 10. Tristan McKenzie lost. He's 5 and 7. Tigers over to White Sox 4 to 3. The Tigers 73 and 78, Chicago 85 and 65. Getting the women's Drew Hutchinson, he's 2 and 1. The lost Craig Kimball, he's 4 and 5. And getting the save was Alex Lang, his first of the year. Reds over to Pirates 9 to 5. The Reds 78 and 73, Pittsburgh 58 and or 56 and 94. Luis Sess is the win. He's 5 and 2. And Cody Ponce the loss. He's 0 and 5. Marlins over to Nationals 8 to 7 and 10 on a walk off wild pitch by Sam Clay that scored Jess Chisel. The, um, the Nats are 61 and 89. Miami 64 and 86. Dylan Florida win, he's 6-6, six and, six, and Clay gets the loss. He is 0-5. Orioles over the Phillies, 2-0. Oh, my God. The Orioles are literally out there ruining teams' playoff chances. It's not just the Yankees. Baltimore's 48-102. Philadelphia, 76-74. John Means to win, he's 6-7. and seven. Ranger Suarez, the loss, 6-5. and five. And Tyler Wells, his third save of the year. And I think... I took the Orioles on yesterday's show. Yanks over the Rangers, 4-3. A big-time win for the Yankees. 84-67 on the year. Texas is 55-95. and Chad Green, the win, he's 8-7. AJ Alexei, the loss, he's 2-1. And Araldis Chapman gets the save. And the Yanks are now a half game back in the AL wildcard race. Royals over the Indians 4 to 2 and 7 the letter game 2 KC 69 82 Cleveland 73 and 76 getting the win Domingo Tapia is 3 and 0 Nick Wickren the loss he's 1 and 2 or 2 and 8 and getting the save his 14th of the year Scott Barlow Rays over the Blue Jays 6 to 4 as uh Toronto's lead for the second wild card is now a half game with that Yankees win Tampa's 93 and 58 Toronto's 84 and 66, so uh, the Rays get closer to the AL East. Um, Shane Boss to win his big league debut. He is 1 0. Robbie Ray, the loss, 12 and 6, and getting his second save of the season. Dietrich ends. And Robbie Ray's up there for the Cy Young. He just had a rough outing. 
But I still think he's the favorite. Um, Cardinals over the Brewers, 5-2. The Cardinals, 80-69. and 69. Milwaukee, 91-59. and 59. John Lester, 87-6. Freddie Peralta lost his 9 5 and getting the save from the Cardinals, Luis Garcia. His first of the season. Astros over the Angels, 10 0. Astros 89 61. LA 72 and 78. Fomber Valdez the win, he's 11 5. And Jame Borea the loss, he's 2 4. Braves over the D backs, 11 4. As they get closer to an NL East title, they're 78 and 70. Arizona 48 and 102. Getting the win for Arizona's Jacob Webb, he's 5 and 3. And Humberto Mejia had a loss for Arizona. He's 0-2. Mariners over days for the two. Seattle 81-69. Oakland 82-68. Getting the win was Tyler Anderson. He's 7-9. The loss, Sean Manaya is 10-10. And, and Paul Sewell gets his ninth save of the season. All right, looking ahead to today. We have one day game at 1 o'clock. The White Sox and the Tigers. Dallas Keuchel and Tyler Alexander. We don't get day games on Tuesdays very often. White Sox minus 172. Tigers plus 144. Over under 9.5. Overs minus 105. Unders minus 115. White Sox minus 1.5 is even money. Tigers plus 1.5 is minus 120. I'm going to go with the over 9.5 minus 105. Dallas Keuchel's not been good this year. Just plain and simple. Uh, Maybe he turns it around for the postseason, but gee. Bet over in his games. That's for sure. Certain. Six o'clock, Royals Indians. Daniel Lynch and Cal Quantrill. Indians minus 152, Royals plus 128, over under I and a half. Overs minus 102, unders minus 118. Royals plus one half is minus 152, Indians minus one half is plus 126. I'm going to go with the under. Cal Quantrill's been pretty good this year for Cleveland. I think he's a keeper for them. Um, 630, Pirates Reds. Mitch Keller, Tyler Maley. Reds minus 215. Pirates plus 180. Over under 9. Overs minus 108. Unders minus 112. And the run line plus and minus 1 half, respectively, for the Pirates and the Reds is each minus 110. I'm going to go over 9. Um, Mitch Keller, like, this guy just isn't good. Bet overs in his, all of his games, literally. That's Marlins. Josh Rogers and Trevor Rogers. So the Rogers Bowl. Marlins minus 158. Nats plus 134. Over under 8. Overs minus 105. Unders minus 115. Nats plus 1 half is minus 116. Marlins minus 1 half is plus 132. I'm going under 8 minus 115. Orioles Phillies. We don't know who's pitching yet in this game. But if the total is anything less than nine and a half, give me the over. Rangers, Yankees. Dane Dunning, Jordan Montgomery. Yanks minus 260. Pirate, uh, Rangers plus 215. Over under eight and a half. Overs minus 102. Unders minus 120. Rangers plus one half is plus 108. Yankees minus one half is minus 130. Tough one. Dane Dunning isn't bad. But Jordan Montgomery isn't bad either. Jordan Montgomery quietly having a nice year for the Yankees. Um, I'm going to go the Juice Thunder 8.5 minus 120. Mets Red Sox. Marcus Stroman, Eduardo Rodriguez. Red Sox minus 152. Mets plus 128 over under 9.5. Overs minus 104. Under minus 118. Mets plus 1.5 is minus 160. Red Sox minus one of his plus 130. I'm going to go with the Mets as the road dog here. Um, I just don't think Eduardo Rodriguez has been particularly good this year. I, this is more of an anti-Red Sox pick than a pro-Mets pick. Uh, the Mets are still alive for the playoffs. Um, second wild card from the Cards. They got swept by the Cardinals. And um, they are eight back in the last column, but they're closer to the division than they are to the wild card, which is crazy to think about. They are seven half back in the wild card, six back in the division. It's kind of over for them, but I just think that uh, they're going to win this game. So give me the Mets plus 128. At Fenway against the Red Sox. Um, 
ESPN Blue Jays Rays. Good for this game being on ESPN. Alec Manoa and Drew Rasmussen. Rays minus 112. Blue Jays minus 104. Over under 8.5. Overs minus 102. Unders minus 120. Jays minus 1 half is plus 155. Rays plus 1 half is minus 188. I'm going with the Blue Jays. Um, bounce back spot. Um, Could have won that game yesterday, but didn't. So I'm going to go with the Jays. I like Alec Manoa a lot. Minus 104 as a dog. 7.30, Twins Cubs from Wrigley. Griffin Jacks, Alec Mills. Cubs minus 120, Twins plus 102, over under 8.5. Overs even money, unders minus 122. Twins plus 1.5 is minus 200. Cubs minus 1.5 is plus 164. I'm going over 8.5 at even money. How in the world is it only 8.5? Cards Brewers. Jake Woodford and Brandon Woodruff. Brewers minus 225, Cards plus 188. Over under 8, overs minus 104, unders minus 118. Cards plus one half is minus one eighteen. Brewers minus one half is minus one two. I'm gonna go under eight minus one eighteen. Don't feel super about it. Eight thirty. Dodgers Rockies. Julio Urias, Antonio Sanzatella. Dodgers minus two ten. Rocks plus one seventy six. Over under eleven. Overs minus one two. Unders minus one twenty. Dodgers minus one half is minus one twenty five. Rocks plus one half is plus one four. I'm going under eleven minus one twenty. I'm going with the juice under. That is way too high. 9.30, Astros Angels. Jose Yurdeke and Pocky Nodden. Astros minus 240, Angels plus 198, over under 9. Overs minus 108, unders minus 112. Astros minus 1F is minus 142, Angels plus 1F is plus 118. I'm going over 9, minus 108. Mariners A's. Marco Gonzalez, Paul ba- Blackburn. 8 is minus 136, Mariners plus 116, over under 8.5. Overs minus 115, unders minus 105. Mariners plus one F is minus 170. Oakland minus one F is plus 140. Um, these two teams still alive and they have wild card very quietly. If the Blue Jays lose again and one of these two teams win, it gets interesting, especially if the Yankees lose too, which is conceivable. Um, I'm going to go with the Mariners as a road dog plus 116. I like Marco Gonzalez a lot. I'm taking them at Oakland. And 10 o'clock, Fox Sports 1, Giants, Padres. Kevin Gossman is going for San Diego. San Fran's probably going to be favored. Um... But if they're a dog, I'm taking them. But let's say San Fran's favored. If the total is anything less than 8.5, I'm going to jump on the over. All right, so there you have it for baseball today. Now I'm going to do NFL power rankings for week number three coming up. Um, No particular theme to the power rankings. I'm just going to go over wins and losses. And um, all that. All right, number 32 is the New York Jets. Um, Week one, they lost to Carolina. Week two, they lost at home to the Patriots. Um, Zach Wilson, four interceptions in that game. Yikes. But at least their defense looked pretty good in both those games. Number 31, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're 0-2. Losses at Houston and home against Denver. Um... Trevor Lawrence has also looked like a rookie in his first two starts. Number 30, the Houston Texans. They're 1-1. One one, went over the Jaguars at home and lost at the Browns. Tyra Taylor hurt. And now it's the Davis Mills show. Number 29, the Atlanta Falcons. They're 0-2. Home loss against the Eagles. Road loss at Tampa Bay. Um, that offense showed signs of life last week. Um... And even made that game closer than it should have been as well in Tampa Bay. Number 28, the Philadelphia Eagles. They're 1-1. One one win at the Falcons. Lost at home against the 49ers. That's what happens when a good defense comes to you. Jalen Hurts. We'll see with Philly. And they just lost Brandon Graham for the season with the turn ACL. And that's just brutal for their pass rush. Number 27, the Detroit Lions. They're 0 2. Loss at home against the 49ers. And Blow lost at Lambeau last night, predictably so. Jared Goff has had some moments. CJ Hawkins is a good fantasy tight end that really is going to be a star in this league. Next up, they're home against the Ravens. Next up, by the way, for Philly is um, at Dallas. Monday Night Football. 
Falcons next up is at the Giants. Texans next up is home on Thursday night against the Panthers. Jaguars next up is home against the Cardinals. And Jets next up is at Denver. The number 26 is the New York Football Giants. They're 0-2. Lost at home against Denver. Lost at Washington football team in a game which they should have won on Thursday night. If it wasn't for a dumb offsides penalty on Dexter Lawrence. Or a phantom flag on what should have been a rushing touchdown for Daniel Jones. Um, they would be one and one, and we're gonna be talk. We'd be talking differently about the Giants, but their offense really showed some progression from week one to week two. And that Washington defense, we'll get to the to the football team in a moment. But um, I was actually somewhat encouraged with the Giants, despite that just awful loss. Weirdly encouraged. It's probably because their offense looked good. But next up for them, home against the Falcons. In a game that they absolutely must win. Number 25, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, they're 1-1. One one. Win at the Patriots. Lost badly at home against the Bills. Um, next up for them is at the Raiders. And probably without Tua Tungabaloa, which really sucks for them. Number 24, the Cincinnati Bengals. They are 1-1 one one with a home win over the Vikings in overtime in Week 1. and Week 2, a loss at the Bears. And mostly Justin Fields. Next up for them is at Pittsburgh. And Joe Burrow still trying to recover from that injury. Number 23, the Chicago Bears. They are 1-1. One one, a loss on the first Sunday night football game of the year at the Rams. And a home win over Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Next up for them is at the Browns and Baker Mayfield. And... Hopefully it's Justin Fields going for them. Um, number 22, the Indianapolis Colts throw in two. Home loss opening week against Seattle. Home loss in week two against the Rams. Very encouraging game. They should have won week two. That's why I have them pretty high for an 0-2 team. They should have won the other day. Um, Carson Wentz hurt again. Next up at the Titans. Number 21, the Minnesota Vikings. This is the best 0-2 team, if you ask me. A loss in a game which they should have won at the Bengals and a loss in a game which they should have won at the Cardinals. Home opener coming up in a game they absolutely have to have against the Seattle Seahawks. Number 20, the Washington professional football team. They're 1-1. Home loss against the Chargers in Week 1. Home win on Thursday football against the, the Giants in Week 2. They should have lost that Giants game. Talked about earlier. Their defense is might be overrated. Um, it played better against Justin Herbert in Week One than against than it did against Daniel Jones in Week Two, and Daniel Jones is much worse than Justin Herbert. Like, is this defense really that all that great? Is Chase Young really in the same sentence as Miles Garrett and the Bosa Bros? Next up for the football team, they are at the Bills. Number 19, the Carolina Panthers. They are 2-0 with wins over the Jets and the Saints. Um, Soft 2-0, sure. But it's 2-0, it's 2-0. Sam Darnold's been actually decent. Christian McCaffrey's been amazing as always. Next up for Carolina is at Houston with a real shot to go 3-0 here. Number 18, the New Orleans Saints. They're 1-1 one one with a big win over the Packers on week one, and then they lose at the Panthers week two. Interesting game for them in week three at the Patriots. Number 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're 1-1. One one. Road win at the Bills. That was a nice win, but they followed up with a stinker at home against the Raiders. Um, they got a come out and arguably they have to win on Sunday at home against the Bengals. That is a huge spot for Roethlisberger to prove that he's not washed up. Number 16, Las Vegas Raiders are 2-0. and Wins over the AFC North and the Steelers and the Ravens. Um, that Ravens win looks fabulous right now. We'll see about that Steelers win. But you could argue that looks good because they went out and beat the Bills week one and then the Bills 
killed the Dolphins week two, but we don't know about the Dolphins. And that's who the Las Vegas Raiders face in week three with a chance to go 3-0. and Number 15, the New England Patriots. They are 1-1 one and one with a loss at home against the Dolphins and a win at the Jets. So two division games under the belt of the Patriots so far. Mac Jones has been okay. Um, next up for the Patriots, an interesting game at home against the Saints. Number 14, the Seattle Seahawks. They're 1-1 one one with the road win at Indy, home loss against the Titans in a game which they should have won. Um... Next up for Seattle is an interesting spot at Minnesota, a team that's going to be playing desperate, I think. Number 13, the Tennessee Titans are 1-1. One one. Ugly home loss against the Cardinals in Week 1. Rebound in a big way, led by Derrick Henry at Seattle. Um, next up for them is a really good spot to get themselves the 2-1 and one at home against the banged-up Indianapolis Colts. Um, number 12, the Denver Broncos, um, also 2-0 right now, um, with wins over the Giants and the Jaguars, but those, let's be honest, those won't, those wins you won't be telling your grandkids about if you're a, a Broncos fan. Like, the Cardinals have better wins than the Broncos, the Raiders have better wins than the Broncos, the Panthers arguably have better wins than the Broncos, although, uh, the Saints win I'm referring to, not the Jets win. Um, so very fraudulent 2-0 in my opinion, as good as their defense is and as solid as Teddy Bridgewater is. And then um, they're at home against the Jets. you got to take care of business against the Jets. Number 11, the Los Angeles Chargers. They're 1-1. One one. Road win at the Washington Professional Football Team. Home loss against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Should have beaten the Cowboys, arguably. But it is what it is. They... Or at the Chiefs this week. That's tough. Number 10, the Dallas Cowboys. They're 1-1. One one. Heartbreaking road loss at the Bucks on opening night. And then rebound to win on the luck of Craig Zerline at the Chargers. Great chance to go 2-1 and one on Monday night this week against the Eagles. Number 9, the Green Bay Packers. They are 1-1. One that terrible Saints loss in week one. They rebound last night and beat the Lions on Monday Night Football in week two. Next up for them, tough one at San Francisco on Sunday Night Football. And Aaron Rodgers bounced back in an absolute major way. Number eight, the Baltimore Ravens. They're 1-1. One one. Um, week one, they lost to the Raiders in a game which they should have won, arguably. And... Um, Sunday night, they beat the Chiefs at home in an impressive fashion. So arguably should be 2-0. Next up for them is at the Lions with a great opportunity to get the 2-1. and one. Um, Number 7 is the Cleveland Browns. They are 1-1. One one. Road loss of the Chiefs, understandably so. And then um, home win against the Texans in a game that should have been a little bit more uh, a bigger of a margin. Um, and coming up for the Browns home against the Bears with a great shot to go 2-1. and one. Um, Number six is the Arizona Cardinals. They're 2-0 and oh with wins over the Titans and the Jaguars. Or, I'm sorry, the Titans and the Vikings. Jaguars is their upcoming opponent in Week 3. That's actually a good 2-0. and oh. That's not a soft 2-0. and oh. The Titans are good. They bounce back from that loss and then their second one's the Vikings, who I think are the best 0-2 team by a mile. Um, and they have a good shot to go 3-0. They're at the Jags. Number five, the San Francisco 49ers. They're also 2-0 with wins over the Lions and the Eagles. Soft 2-0, but it's still 2-0, and, and I have respect for the Niners. And their defense rebounded after giving up all those points in garbage time. And coming up with a decent shot to go 3-0, at home against the Packers on Sunday Night Football. Number four is the Buffalo Bills. They are 1-1, one one, home loss against the Steelers. Big road win at the Dolphins. Coming up, home watch the professional football team. Number three, the Kansas City Chiefs. They are 1-1, one one, home win over the Browns. Road loss at the Ravens. 
And now coming up, they have the Chargers at home. Number two, Los Angeles Rams. They are 2-0 and with wins at home against the Bears and at the Colts. Nothing to write home about, but 2-0 and still 2-0. and And they have a monster game on Sunday at home. A proven spot for Matt Stafford against the best in the world, Tom Brady and the New England Pat- or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I can't believe I just said that on the podcast. Oh, my God. Um, and then the Buccaneers are number one until they lose a the game. Um, they have wins over the Cowboys and the Falcons. The Cowboy win is decent. Falcons, nothing to write home about. But 2-0 is 2-0. And they are at the Rams, like I mentioned a second ago, in a big spot for Brady. And probably the only time they're going to be an underdog this year, unless if they're at somebody else on the road at some point, where that road team is looking red hot and the Bucks have some injuries. So um, Brady is a dog at the Rams this week, which is something that I wanted to make notice to. All right, so there you have it for the power rankings for today. All right, now I'm going to do news and notes. Um not a lot today. For news and notes, but breaking news just now, JJ Redick announces his retirement from the NBA after 17 professional seasons. Congrats to JJ Redick, great career, great shooter, been a lot of big games in his life. Bounced around a little bit too. He was on Orlando, he was on Milwaukee. He was on the Clippers for a while. He was on Philly. He was on New Orleans. So, congrats to JJ Redick. I'm sure he's going to be doing some podcasts and some media stuff. So, he has a future ahead of him in terms of media. Um, The 76ers want Ben Simmons at camp as uh, Simmons does not intend to report to trading camp, but the 76ers remain... Intent on trying to convince him. We got to see how this plays out. This is really interesting, the Simmons stuff. The 49ers are working out running backs Duke Johnson and Lamar Miller as they are dealing with the banged-up backfield. The New York Yankees activate Luis Severino from the 60-day injured list but didn't pitch yesterday. I think they're going to use him out of the bullpen. And that would be really interesting. If he can get out to them in the bullpen, say they make the playoffs, and he's... A shade of what he was. Gee, that pretty much would save their bullpen in a major way. Tyrod Taylor can miss a month with a grade two hamstring. That is just brutal. He played so well against the Jaguars and that little bit against the Browns. Jarvis Landry week to week. Sideline two to three weeks. With a relatively minor MCL sprain. They got to get Odell back now. Salvador Perez makes catcher history. 46 home runs. Most ever by a catcher in a single season. Congrats to him. John Harbaugh was very fired up after the big win over the Chiefs. And the locker room speech was epic. Go check it out on Bleacher Report. What is very entertaining these first two weeks of the season, is the Monday night broadcast with the Manning brothers. If you haven't checked it out, go do so in the future. Peyton Manning took a jab at Spygate during the the broadcast last night. Our thing, I think our conversation was bugged like the Patriots used to do. <laughs> oh, Peyton, that was great. Aaron Rodgers passes John Elway on the all-time passing touchdown on the all-time passing list after throwing uh, four touchdowns against the Lions in three quarters. So, 10th on the all-time passing yards list now is an accomplishment for Rodgers. Aaron Jones lost his dad's ashes on a touchdown as he dropped his chain with his father's ashes in the end zone. I know that's the... I know that's where my dad would want me to lose it, he says. And one more thing before we move on to Dancing with the Stars. Um, The search for Gabby Petito's fiancé resumes at 
the Florida Nature Reserve. And they're going to do an autopsy today, it looks like in Wyoming, to determine the cause. And if you haven't done so, go check out a TikTok account, Miranda Baker, who apparently drove laundry, Brian Laundry, from one spot to another while hiking. And she goes into very detail about the story. So if you haven't checked it out, go do so. And I'm just I in in disbelief that they haven't found this kid yet. And the parents were taken out of the house yesterday too. That's one thing I didn't mention yet about the case. So if I have any more information regarding this, I obviously will discuss it on the show. Dancing with the Stars season 30 underway. Um I'm going to um talk about um the scores and the type of dances and the songs. So first up was Melanie C. and Gleb Savchenko, they went first. And they did a cha-cha-cha dance to Wannabe by the Spice Girls, and they got a 27. Next up, The Miz and Whitney Carson performed a cha-cha-cha dance to Butter by BTS. And got a 24. Amon Schumpert and Daniela Karagach went third and they did a jive dance to Hey Ya by Outcast. Next up, Olivia Jade and Valentin Chimarkovsky. Did a salsa dance to Juice by Lizzo and got a 25. Next up, Jimmy Allen and Emma Slater did a tango dance to The Way I Are by Timberland and Carrie Hilson and got a 22. Next up, Melora Hardin and Artem Chingvinstev did... A tango dance to Simply Irresistible by Robert Palmer and got a 26. Next up was Suni Lee and Sasha Farber with a jive dance to Stay by The Kid Laurie and Justin Bieber and got a 28. That was a fabulous dance in my mind. Next up. Cody Rigsby and Cheryl Burke did a tango dance to Physical by Dua Lipa and got a 24. After them was Amanda Klutz and Alan Burstein with a tango dance to Dance Again by Jennifer Lopez and Pitbull and got a 28. They were really good. Next up was Martin Cove and Britt Stewart. With a Paso Duble to You're the Best by Joe Esposito. Got a 13. That was the, easily the worst dance of the evening. Next up, Kenya Moore and Brandon Armstrong. With a Foxtrot dance to Kiss Me More by Doja Cat. And they got a 26. Next up was 
Christine Chu and Pasha Poskov with the tango dance to Glamorous by Fergie, Fergie and Ludacris. And they got a 25. Next up was Matt James and Lindsay Arnold with a cha-cha-cha number to, to Give It To Me Baby by Rick James got a 24. Then it was Brian Austin Green and Sharma Burgess with a foxtrot to Skate by Silk Sonic and got a 24. And last but not least, JoJo Siwa and Jenna Johnson with a quick step number two. Are You Gonna Be My Girl by Jet and got a 29. And that was among one of the best numbers of the evening. And they announced tonight who, or no, no elimination tonight. The first elimination is going to be a week from yesterday. So elimination will take place six days from now. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I'm going over eight in the Twins-Cubs games. It went down from eight and a half and even money to eight. I like it better at eight. At minus 105. So I'm going to lay two units on over eight between the Twins and the Cubs for my best bet of the day. All right, so there you have it. Um. For the show, I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything going on today with baseball. And look ahead to tomorrow. Um, I believe the WNBA playoffs begin tomorrow. No, that's Thursday. Major League Soccer. We have soccer tomorrow. We'll get to that. And college football. Isn't back till Thursday, and NFL isn't back till Thursday either. So, probably going to be another short show again tomorrow. Maybe I'll do baseball power rankings as the activity. I haven't done that in so long. All right. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.